Hello everyone, Cutting Tool Designer here. Welcome to part 26 of uh, rebuilding the South Pen, South Bend, Bend, South Bend lathe. Uh, today we're going to finish taking apart what's left of the headstock. Um, Got to take the bull pin out, get the bull pin gear off. So we get the bushing off and take a better look at the overall shaft condition. Um, Got to take out the oil wicks and take out the oil cups, drain all the oil, a couple more uh, cap screws in here or socketed set screws that we got to take out. Uh, and then we can start cleaning on this. So we'll show that and uh, see where we're at uh, on what the headstock condition is in. So that, uh, stay tuned. Let me get things set up here and we'll take a look and go from there. All right, man, one second. All right, <clears throat> first thing we're gonna do is take the bullpen lock out. Now, there is a wire spring in here, but it's not a very strong spring, so don't get the temptation to pry this spring out because it'll bend it and then you'll have to bend it back and then play around with it. Basically the tip, the tip here is, is bent over slightly to hold it in place. So just get a pair of pliers, straighten it out, and then you should be able to just slide this right out. So that's all there is to that. And then the pin will fall out. And of course it locates in uh, these grooves so that you can move forward and backwards uh, and doesn't come out. Now <clears throat> mine on the other hand show you here there's supposed to be a lip around the outside and it's all broken off. You can see little pieces there um, so that you can get your fingers on it. I mean I can still get my fingers on it but uh, don't know at some point probably want to make another one or maybe I can get uh, get a washer or something made and uh, you know have it brazed on or something uh, not quite that big that that's way too big but something similar to that maybe I can get that done to get fixed okay so that was pretty easy uh, again don't just yank that pin out or spring out because you're gonna have to play around with it to get it fit right again and uh, now we're gonna take it over to the press uh, try and get the bowl gear off so we're gonna want to be careful where we set this in so that we don't hit this bushing uh, when we go to press out and if you have one uh, always best to put your thread protector on this this will be dropping down out uh, so We'll want to protect those threads in the front of that spindle. Okay, so hang on a second. We'll get things set up in the press and uh, get her pressed out. Be back at you. All right, got the press all set up here. Now one of the things I did, so I took a towel and put it under the pins, under the bracket, then I used a clamp to hold them together so they don't slide through and this will give me a little place to catch this in case it falls through while I'm trying to do this. So let's get this kind of lined up and I'm going to turn this bearing so it's facing where the bolt pin goes so I know its location and I'm going to use the biggest radius that we have on here and I don't want it to be tight on this side uh, so that that pin goes through and pushing it back to try and get it centered it's not centered this way now the other thing is to have something on top to press um, <clears throat> not a lot of room to put a socket or anything there's an old uh, brake caliper piston compressor. It's not the greatest shape. Just a little piece of plate steel. 
and I'm going to set use it as the, uh, the pressure point. So we have some contact on there. Okay, don't like that. Get that away from there. All right, so we got it on there. So now we'll uh, start pumping it down. Get my pipe. See if we can make this move a little bit gently. Here it goes, broke it loose. So now we'll, uh, yep. Feel it popping out. So definitely a tight fit. This would not have been fun without this. She's definitely making it easy. Grab a hold of this top. Yeah, it's coming up pretty easy now. There we go. Let's see if it slides out the rest of the way. Here we go. Of course, that works pretty good. I'm going to have to maybe make something up, have on here permanently that we can just slap on. All right, so there's the spindle. We'll take it back over. There's the key for the bowl gear. Let's get it back over on the bench and get the key out and get the bearing off here and see how things look. So, be back at you in a second. Okay, back on the bench. Here's the bowl gear. Now we can get this cleaned up and cut some surface rust on the inside here. This is the side that faces the cone pulley. Uh, this is a bearing face against the cone pulley. And of course that's where the pin goes. So we'll get this uh, degreased, de-rusted, get it cleaned up and ready to go. Just set that off to the side for a second. And here is the woodruff key. Coming out okay. Now let's slide the bearing off. Let's go ahead and get this out. And there's a little little F on the top there for front. And very faintly on here, and I don't think I'll get to have it on the camera. There's a very, very light scribe line that has an F on it. Very light. I don't think that'll show up on camera, but that also tells us the front. So that's fitting on there pretty snug. So let's just take a quick look on the inside of the bearing here. Get some of the grease off. Okay. Try and see if we can get some light in there. There's some discoloration. Not a whole lot of wear lines. So I'm assuming this bearing, this bushing, was probably replaced at one time also. Alright, now let's look at the shaft. Get a little bit of the recent oil cleaned up a little bit. Still have the thread protector on. Always best to leave it on until uh, you need to take it off for cleaning or whatever reasons, but all right, so for the main bearing, very, very light, barely fill anything. You can see some lines in there, but no major digs. I don't know if that'll come out better over here or not, but... Uh, so not too shabby. This surface, of course, is right here where the bull gear sits. 
This is where the front of the cone pulley sits. It's in excellent shape. Problem that I see is this area right here. This is the back of the cone pulley and it's pretty grooved. Here's the rear bearing surface. Uh, again, no scoring marks whatsoever. Excellent shape. And this is where the rear drive gear goes on. That's in good shape. So this is the only concerning area. I'm not sure how much that's going to be a problem or an issue. Now if we look at the cone pulley, it's been degreased and cleaned up. Um, overall in good shape. The upper bearing hardly has any signs of wear on it whatsoever. Don't know if I got the right light for in here or not. But the back side, see the oil groove that circles around. Back side has a lot, a lot of grooves in there. So that's not the greatest. And yeah, I know, oil retention. It's got an oil groove. I don't need more oil retention. So if I slide this down in here to where it's just sitting there. Yeah, there's a lot of slot. There's a lot of slot there. If I move it up further on the cone. Not so much slop in here. You can see a big gap in there. So I'll have to take some measurements to see how bad this diameter is. Um, I mean, really, this whole spindle is in excellent shape other than this area right here. You know, that could possibly be plated or flame coated, flame sprayed, and then reground. The problem, though, is this back bushing, because this back bushing is actually an integrated gear, which may have been causing the binding because of the slop in here. So when I put the back gear in, it was kind of binding in a certain spot as it rotated around. So I'm feeling this is kind of, by the looks of it, egg-shaped. So I haven't looked to see if I can get one of these gears. Uh, gear slash bushing combination. Because you really can't do anything with the inside of this. Uh, other than weld it up and rebore it, but that'd be a nightmare. You know, put a bunch of brazing on it. I don't know. I have to think about that. That might be a potential option. Of course, the gears do show a bit of wear on. So I'm going to take a look to see what we can find <clears throat> for that rear bearing bushing combination. Other than that, this entire spindle is good with the exception right here so I'm not sure what we'll do there either could be a possibility that if I can get one of those bushings that is oversized we could have this ground down uh, there's enough of a step here that you could do that so anyway things to think about so that's it for the spindle for the moment and the bowl gear. Now we're going to come back over to the rest of the headstock. Uh, let's see, got a couple of screws here in the front that held the pan plate. There's a little plate that goes down here so the chips don't get up underneath. And we're going to go ahead and take out the uh, oil wicks. The one thing I found out was pretty neat, and this one I've already started to take out. 
And actually, it's got a lot of oil on it, but it actually looks in pretty good shape. So these must not have been too old to begin with either. Okay, possibly save those as a spare. Take a real small Allen wrench, and you'll see there's a groove, almost like a dovetail grooved uh, around the inner lips of the bearing housing areas and then there's holes down in here so what that does is as the oil works its way out through the bearing it gets caught in this lip and those that lip continues on the, the bearing caps also but then it drains back down into the oil way so that we get uh, a lot less oil leakage on either side of the, of the bearing but if you reach down here with this you can kind of use an allen wrench to stick in there to pull that up to get it started there's the other one so those two are out now i know there's still oil in this thing still oil in the caps how much is left i don't know so what we're going to do now is we need to take the caps off the uh, oil reservoirs rather so i'm going to put uh, some towels and towel underneath here because we're, we're definitely going to get some oil out and uh, it takes a 7 16 wrench and we can get in here behind it start unscrewing it okay so there's one oil cap all right, well, it didn't drain too much. This one over here is a bit trickier because it's right up against the housing. And it like really the back corner, the back corners actually contact the housing as I spin it around. So it's just like barely clear. So you got to kind of push it through. I have to do it again. real tight not much space there I don't know if that would be worth the housing looks thick enough maybe going in there and filing a little bit of that surface away right in there where it contacts just so it doesn't hit next time we put new ones in or replace put those back on after we clean them up we'll see what kind of conditions they're in so now we have a lower set screw and an upper set screw Now, the upper set screw is just there to plug a hole, and what that is there for is when you put your wicks in. If you put new wicks in, you run a thin wire through here, and I believe um, where did I put that little? Allen wrench I had oh, right here. I believe that there's a little hole on the other side. Yeah, I don't see it. So that you push your wick down in, push it down, put this uh, a wire or something across it, and that holds the wick down while you're assembling it. So we'll show that when we get to the reassemble position. The bottom set screw is actually used to drain the oil out of the reservoir area. So we'll uh, take these out. And I see a little bit of oil there. And let's see. Yep, a little bit coming out. So get this side done here. on that side and the bottom one might need to clean that out a little bit and the bottom one see how much oil is on this side 
Oh yeah, a lot more oil on the back side. So it's definitely draining. Alright. Let me uh, get a few more towels here. Or better yet, get some old socks or something to absorb it. We got one over here I can use. See if we can get the rest of the oil to drain out. Of course, when we go to degrease this and everything, we'll probably want to make sure that we flow enough cleaner down through here to clean the oil holes out. There's some more in here. That should pretty much do it. Get the majority of it out anyways. Okay, well, um, that's it for the disassembly there's nothing else to take apart here other than getting it degreased and getting it stripped cleaned up repainted and ready to go I've already painted the bearing caps uh, I've painted the gear here for the back the inner web was painted the center shaft for the back gear assembly uh, was rusted pretty good so I cleaned it up and then I painted it. It, it doesn't matter if it's painted or not. Um, at least hopefully the paint will help keep it from rusting again. And then the handle here I got it cleaned up and polished the handle and painted. I uh, don't really want to grab a hold of it right now. Here let me see. Get you a shot. So that's the back gear handle, polished and painted, ready to go back together. Okay, well I think uh, that's going to wrap it up for this episode. That shows the final little bit that had to be disassembled, getting the bowl gear off, getting the pin, and the rest of the little things here for the oiling system. So hang on one second, we'll wrap this and come right back at you. Alright everyone, that's going to wrap up episode 26 of restoration of the uh, South Bend Heavy Tin Lathe. Finished getting all the uh, headstock stuff apart, spindle apart. A um, few things we probably need to look at to address. Uh, probably would still be functional. Uh, still want to look into the options uh, for the uh, cone pulley bushing uh, issue that I have. But other than that, uh, looks pretty good. We'll get, get the rest of this stuff all cleaned up and then uh, hopefully uh, in an upcoming episode we'll uh, put it all back together again. And then uh, the next step, probably before we get to that, is we're going to go ahead and get to the um, underdrive and get it out and disassembled uh, from under the base of the machine. So that'll probably be the next episode. If it all works out, we'll see. So uh, if you like what you see, please subscribe. That way you get a notification when uh, another episode comes out. And uh, if you like the whole project that we're working on, give me a thumbs up. Greatly appreciate it. Uh, so everybody out there that subscribes, really appreciate it. Uh, numbers have been kicking up um, over 2,000 now. Um, and I, I relate that to the relationship I have with uh, a lot of the other YouTubers out there. Uh, time spent at the Summer Bash with uh, people like Keith Rucker and Keith Fenner and all the rest of them out there. Adam Booth, um, Tom Lipton. You know, Randy Richards, Ray Canelia, 
Uh, and I know I'm going to forget somebody. Pierre Bouget from Canada. Uh, Phil, I can't remember how to pronounce your name, Phil. Um, Bruce Witham. Uh, uh, who am I missing? Uh, Chuck Barberito. Um, Emma Ritson. Um, let's see, we also had uh, John Mills there this year, which is great. Uh, opportunity to meet him. Um, Tom Zilichman. Stan out is Stan Zinkowski, of course, is the man that uh, puts that all together every year, and God bless him for what he does. It's a uh, it's a major event. Uh, so if I forgot somebody out there, I, I apologize. So until next time, everybody out there, please take care. Take care.